Hello, DJ Stevens here, senior handler at the Internet Storm Setter. I was given a cobble strike sample, a, a beacon, that my tool 1768.py is not able to extract the configuration of. So that's my tool, the sample, and that's the output that you get. Now let's take a look at that file, should be a PE file. And indeed it is, but it also has an overlay. The low overlay is uh, around 256 kilobytes and it represents 91% of the file, well actually almost 92%, it's a high entropy. So that's probably where the beacon is hiding because if the file itself, the PE file, without the overlay, let's say a couple of 10 kilobytes, that's not possible to hide a, a full uh, stageless beacon inside there because that's around 200, 250k. Let's take a look at the overlays, sorry, at the sections. And indeed you have many sections, but the large, largest one here with the code is 10k. And okay, you can hide, you can put shell code here in, in here, stage shell code, but you cannot put a full beacon in it. So let's take a look at the overlay, because that's where it will be. So I get the overlay. And let's do an uh, hung encoded ASCII dump. Okay. Here I see a repeating sequence. That's already interesting. And let's take a look at the beginning. Okay, I see this. Now I, I looked this up. This is something to do with the compiler that was used. But for the rest, you don't find anything meaningful. I'm going to pipe this through my string command. Here, a binary dump. And see, not much interesting here. So. What is probably going on here is that the PE file is contained here and that it is XOR encoded. And that is why at the end that you see here this repeating sequence. Because at the end of a PE file, there are usually uh, a lot of null bytes, uh, uh, value zero, zero. And when you XOR zero, zero, a zero zero sequence, a null byte sequence, when you XOR that with a key, you actually end up with a key. So if this is XOR encoded, then this here is the key. And so it is uh, repeating here. You see one down, two to the left. So that's 16, that's two. So the key is um, 18 characters. Now, a thing that I have <coughs> is a tool that can do a known plain text attack KPA with XOR encoding. So you have to give it a known plain text and then it will try to find the known plain text that is XOR encoded and extract the key from uh, the XORing of that known plain text with the actual data of the overlay here. And I did update my tool here, XOR KPA, so that it has a couple of plain text for cobble strike. So one of them is CS key um, dot. So this is a known plain text for the header of the public key in the configuration with an uh, XOR dot, so uh, 2E. So let's run this. Okay, and um, here you have different candidate keys and the most likely key is at the end because this is the key here that the tool found, the, the XOR decryption key. And when it uses that key to decode that plain text, then it still has 15 extra bytes over. So that means that the key is repeating and it is very li likely that the correct key was found. 
when we have that, what we can do is say option D to do the decoding and then it will decode using the most likely key, yeah, the, the last key, and output this as binary. And I'm going to pipe this through, well, let's do first PE check to see if we end up with a PE file. Uh, and, and I'm assuming that it doesn't start uh, because you have that uh, header. Um, so I'm going to try to locate the PE file. Okay, no PE file was found. Let's take a look at the strings. Okay, yeah, and decoding has worked because now we have readable strings and we didn't have that. So I will pipe this now into my Cobalt Strike Beacon Analysis tool. And indeed here, the configuration is found and extracted. Now, a bit more about the known plain text attacks here. If you do a help, here you have the different uh, plain text that I uh, have foreseen for this tool. Uh, you can of course add your own plain text, no problem at all, uh, in a text file for example. But you can also say I, I want to use one of the predefined ones. Huh? And so this is the plain text of a um, header of the Cobble Strike key that is not XOR encoded. Hmm. So value for config item seven, sorry, seven, that's the, the public key, type three, a length here of uh, hexadecimal 100 bytes. And then here you have the key, the public key, the start. Well, actually this, this part is always the same and that's the, the header with, for example, the ID. Hmm. And so that's the one that is not XOR encoded. And then you have two others, one that is XOR encoded with a dot and one with the I. Hmm. Those are the two ones that you often find in Cobalt Strike Beacons. Well, when I did the analysis of this sample, I did not use uh, XOR KPA here because uh, then it was not able to do the decoding. Uh, first of all, I had to update it to Python 3. Second, I didn't have these uh, keys here. So what I did, he was use uh, my translate tool in a different method and let me show you so an ASCII dump of the overlay and here so this for example and then here two extra bytes like this that's a likely key because here you can see it repeating like this. Now of course when I say this is a, a likely key and starting with 28 could also be that it actually starts with a zero like this and that 28 is at the end and so on. So you have to try different uh, rotations of uh, that key. So that's what I can do with my translate tool. So a full read, because we're going to act on all the data at once, not byte per byte. So lambda function data, and you have an XOR decoding function, encoding function in translate.py that you can use. So you give it the data and you give it the key. Yeah, so I actually do need the key. Let's run that again. Okay, so and let's assume that this is the key. Let me copy this. So a binary dump, pipe this into translate, a lambda function, and I use XOR, that's a built in function in translate.py, my translation script that uh, does XOR decoding, encoding. So you give it the data, you give it the key, 
and uh, so here 28 and then I need those two bytes too because it's 18 bytes long and now this is a, a small update that I made to my tool uh, the function XOR you had to give it a uh, binary string uh, hexadecimal was not an option now it is but if you give it uh, hexadecimal as a, a key you have to give uh, pass a third parameter hexadecimal that needs to be true uh, and when we do this we will do the translation and uh, the XOR encoding with this key and let me pass this to strings pi to see what we end up with okay man yeah that's not the correct key because we don't have anything that is correct now like I said I arbitrarily shows here to start with 28 but it could also be that the key actually starts with a eh? that it that is the key a0 zero, zero 09 and so on 3d and then at the end 28 okay now that is a rotation of the key and that is also a, a parameter that I implemented an extra option here in uh, XOR and that is that you can say that you want to do a rotation on the key by default the rotation is zero so there is no rotation but here we are going to a rotation of one so that means we shift we rotate all the bytes one position to the left and then the byte here that at the beginning ends up at the end so let's try this okay that doesn't work and then just doing trial and error to three four rotate five bytes let's try six bytes okay and now we have uh, decoded so the key is rotated for six bytes so one well zero one two three four five six so here 27 zero e that's the start of the key okay you can check this uh, we have a decoding and if we go back to XOR KPA here sorry XOR KPA let's just run XOR KPA on it with the name CS key dot the key does indeed here also start with 27 0e mm. so XOR KPA is able to find that key because uh, you give it a known plain text and then it uses that known plain text to XOR the, the data and when you uh, XOR, uh, XOR encoded data with known plain text what you end up with for that known plain text is actually the key the XOR key now this works if the XOR key is smaller than the uh, the known plain text eh? if uh, the XOR key is larger uh, longer than the known uh, plain text then it will not work because you try to find repetitions of uh, the key and that's what XOR KPA does now one last thing so here we translate hmm? I didn't use a known plain text attack but I just looked at the data and thought okay this is a potential key let me try this with trial and error okay that's what we did here well I have also implemented the following uh, option option C eh? instead of giving it a rotation that is a number you can gi also give it a, a rotation that is a C and with option C it will try to find the location of the key in the data and if it finds it it will use that to calculate the rotation and as you can see here it finds the rotation uh, for you 
and you don't have to do a trial and error here. But that doesn't always work. 